Hi there, all of you. Am I audible? Am I audible? Type in the chat box so that we can start. Type in the chat box. If you can hear me, then we can start. OK, yes, you gave me the green signal. I'll share the screen with you, OK? And then uh, start the class. OK. Let me just check on the second screen. If I'm, if you can see me, then the screen is there. Uh, yes, the screen is coming. Let me just check on the second screen. If I'm, if you can yeah, see yeah, me, then coming. the screen is there. Okay. Uh, yes. The I shared the full screen with you instead. On the second screen. If I'm, if you can yeah, see yeah, me, then coming. the screen is there. Okay. Uh, yes. The I shared the full screen with you instead. On the second screen. If I'm, yeah. Sorry, yeah. double voice is coming. I'm so sorry. Okay, let me just share the screen. Sorry, I'm sorry. I want to share the full screen. Okay. Uh, here we go. Okay. I hope now you can see the PowerPoint, the slideshow. Let me check. Yes, it's there. So today's class is all about figures of speech. We'll be discussing how you can find figures of speech in the given passages while doing section A, that is comprehension, text one, text two. But before we start that, let's have a small drill, small practice about what all figures of speech are and how you can identify them. So basically, what are you going to do in this video? I'll highlight the things for you. Look at the screen. Uh, you will learn to identify figures of speech and comment on their usage in the given text. Because when you do the questions and comprehension and IGCSC at Excel board, so what you actually have to do, you have to find, you have to identify uh, whether figures of speech have been used by the writer. For example, it can be a simile, a metaphor, or personification, or hyperbolic expression and alliteration. So you have to see whether they have been, how they have been used by the writer, and what's the effect of them on the reader. What meaning are they able to convey to the reader? That's why we need to be able to know what they are and what is the writer trying to say by using them. For example, the first, the easiest of figures of speech is a simile. A simile is a figure of speech, I hope you all know, that compares two unlike things using like or as. The writers use two words, either like or as, to make a comparison between two unlike things. If you look at the screen and look at the example, the first example says cold lemonade is as refreshing as a dip in the pool. So two things have been compared. Cold lemonade has been compared with a dip in the cool. It's as refreshing as a dip in the cool. So here the writer has used the word as to make a comparison between two things. Similarly, if you look at the second example, Playing chess with Ashley is like trying to outsmart a computer. So the writer has used here the word like to make a comparison between a person called Ashley and the computer that she's as smart as a computer. Or uh, his temper was as explosive as a volcano. So here the writer has used the word as. I hope everybody know. So the non-example for this can be I like pizza. There is no like or as. So this is not a simile, OK? I hope you all know. Uh, so in the chat box, write an example, a simile about studying uh, online, OK? In the chat box, write an example about uh, online studies that you are having these days, OK? Write a simile in the chat box. I'm waiting for your response. Then we'll proceed further write a, a sentence using a simile in the chat box about studying online. These days you are having online studies. 
So let me see your comments in the chat box. I'll wait, for, I'll give you half a minute's time and then I'll see what are the comments that you people are making, okay? Okay, so you're writing your comments. Let's see what each uh, participant has done so far. Uh, okay, there are many good answers already available. Well done. Okay, so you wrote. Okay. Studying online is as tedious as watching a snail go forward. Okay. Aksa wrote this. Well done, Aksa. Barira wrote, online classes are as tiring as playing a football match. Okay. So studying online is as tedious as watching a snail go by Aksa. Then Barira wrote, they're as tiring as playing a football match. Aisha wrote, studying online is as good as studying in school. Oh, good. Zimmel wrote, she is as still as a rock. Pleb Studios wrote, uh, wrote, online studying is almost as hard as the Vectors chapter. <laughs> and uh, Zeneb wrote, uh, studying online is as boring as doing nothing. Okay, studying online is as tiring as carrying a load of wood. Okay, Nabiha wrote, online studying is as boring as doing nothing at all. Okay, so you people prefer, I guess, coming to school than studying online. Aisha wrote, studying online makes us as busy as a bee. And Manahil wrote, online studies are convenient as regular studies. And Rudena wrote, studying online is as tiring as studying physically in school. So both are equal according to you. And Khadija wrote, studying online is as difficult as a board exam. Okay, well done. So you've got the hang of it. So here's another example. The church is like a magical castle in the sky. Okay. Let's go to the next slide and see what's a metaphor. You know, there's a very thin borderline between a metaphor and a simile. Because uh, if you look at the screen, I'm going to highlight the important details for you. In metaphor, you don't use the word like or you don't use the word add, but, but you directly call one thing as another. So a metaphor is like is a lot like a simile. So what's the difference? It's still an expression that compares two things to show how they are alike in this in some way, but metaphors don't use the word like or as, you directly call one thing as another without using these two words. For example, if I say, my brain is a computer. So I'm not saying my brain is as smart as a computer, I'm directly saying my brain is a computer, right? So let's see some examples. Uh, what do metaphors look like? Many times they say that, one thing is another. So her eyes are jewels sparkling in the sun. So we directly call her eyes as jewels which are sparkling in the sun. So this is the metaphor here. So the intended meaning or what the writer is trying to say here that her eyes are as shiny as a jewel which is sparkling in the sun. But he's directly calling his eyes as jewels or his teeth are white pearls. So directly the similarity of white pearls has been used, but without using the word like or as. So I hope you'll remember when the word like or as is not used, it's a metaphor. When the word like or as is used, it's a simile. So here are a few examples for you. Your jo friend George is just a big baby. So that means although he's grown up, but he's a big baby. Okay, you are my guardian angel. That means you are protecting me. Johnny's mouth is one huge metal factory. So in the chat box, let me know what's the intended meaning. What is the writer trying to say that Johnny's mouth is one huge metal factory? If you look at the picture, you can have an idea as well that what the writer is actually trying to say. Johnny's mouth is one huge metal factory. What, what's, what the writer is trying to actually say to the reader by using this metaphor. Okay, I'll read your answers in the meantime. Dania wrote, online studies are as tiring as climbing a mountain. And he is wearing braces. Very good. Okay, Heather Khan wrote, he's wearing braces. And Aksa wrote, because of his braces. Noor also wrote, he's 
putting braces. So you got the hang of it. You got the idea. Yes, yes. All of you got the idea. What about the next one? His students are puppets on a string. His students are puppets on a string. What's the intended meaning here? What is the writer trying to say? His students are puppet on a string. Let's see how intelligent you are now. OK, we are done with the braces example. So let's move on. His students are puppets on a string. What is the writer trying to say? Type in the chat box. His students are puppets on a string. OK. The students follow his orders strictly, Heather Khan wrote. Well done, Heather. You're very smart. OK. Afia wrote, this means they are intelligent. Uh, it means that his braces are made of metal. OK. Barira wrote, this means that his students follow, follow the teacher's orders just like puppets. So that means they are extremely obedient. Follow whatever the teacher says. Zainab Zaban also said they do everything that he instructs them to do. Aksar wrote, because they follow the teacher's orders. Isra wrote, students follow everything he says. Very good. Well done. Uh, I'll just go through uh, quickly uh, with all the examples. Let's see. I wish you were always such a chicken. So that means somebody is saying that you were not always so coward. Uh, the girl over there is one beautiful fox. That What does it mean? The girl over there is one beautiful fox. Write in the chat box. Alina wrote, the students are doing only things that the teacher asked them to do. Aisha wrote, the students don't know anything else except what the teacher has taught them. That is another intended meaning. Well done. You have gone one step further, and uh, you are highlighting the deeper aspect, which is the intended meaning. Rodana wrote, this means that the students has to listen to the teacher, whatever he says, just like puppets. Well done, Rodana. And Nabiha wrote, they are intelligent and follow his instructions as a puppet. So you can interpret it in many ways. Good. Follow the rules and regulations, Manahil wrote. And Afia wrote means she is very beautiful. She is one beautiful fox. Usually fox, OK. Fox is intelligent. Fox is very uh, clever and smart. Fox is famous for being smart. So she is one beautiful fox means that she is beautiful. At the same time, she is smart. She is. Uh, over smart or sometimes it's used negatively also cunning kind of cunning okay the kids of that school are all the kids at that school are all brains okay i'll give you a hint and you write the meaning the kids in that school are all brains does that mean they are extremely dumb or extremely intelligent in the chat box are they extremely dumb or are they extremely intelligent Alina wrote, she's very intelligent and beautiful. Manahil also wrote, her personality is compared to Fox. And Afia wrote, they're all smart. OK, fine. We are done with this examples. Fatima Zalekha, Hamna, Heather Khan all wrote that he's intelligent. Zainab also wrote, they're intelligent. Noor also wrote, they're intelligent. Aisha Asim also wrote. Well done. You're all, mashallah, smart kids. OK, so what about this one? The kids at that school are all brains. What does it mean? Uh, yes, they are intelligent. All of you got the hang of it. OK, so life is one long, scary roller coaster. So what's the intended meaning here? Life is one long, scary roller coaster. What's the intended meaning here? What is the writer trying to say by using this metaphor of a roller coaster? Let me see. It has a lot of ups and downs. Good. Hamna wrote, it has a lot of ups and downs. Shout out to Hamna. You are the first one to answer. Splendid work. Afia wrote, it means it has many ups and downs. Barira also said that means that life has ups and downs. It's full of highs and lows. Dania, well done. And Aksa also wrote, it's full of ups and downs. All of you wrote, life is full of problems and many ups and downs. Anam wrote, Leali wrote, it means that Life has ups and downs. Aisha also wrote, we have many experiences in our life. Zainab Zaman wrote, it can go anywhere that has its ups and downs. Fatima wrote, bumpy sometimes and never easy. 
Life is all about risk. Alina, well done. So basically, the writer is trying to tell you that life is all about risk. Well done, Alina. Good job. All of you got the hang of it. I'm so happy to see uh, all the girls. Zimmel wrote, it has ups and downs. Heather Khan wrote, it's full of problems. Isra wrote, it means life is scary and goes up and down. Barira also wrote, life can be scary, sometimes fun. Pleb Studio right has life has problems. Good. Nabiha also wrote, full of ups and downs. Aisha wrote, like a roller coaster. It has ups and downs. Noor wrote, it's long and has many hardships. So see, all of you are interpreting it in different ways, but you are uh, you are reaching the real meaning that the writer is trying to say. Okay, let's go to the next example, which is personification. Okay, uh, I'll highlight one important thing so that you'll never have a problem in identifying it. Just remember this, this per word personification comes from the word person. It comes from the word person, right? So personification means that um, something uh, anything which is given the qualities of a person a living human being that is personification when you give human attributes not of an animal not of a bird not of a thing but of a person remember the word person and person is a living being human being when you give human attributes to someone human qualities to objects animals or anything else that is called personification so let's look at some of the examples. Blades of grass struggled in the sand. Okay, so what is the writer trying to say by using this person? And what's the personification? Which word tells you that this is personification? One word that highlights that it's personification. Can you type in the chat box? Which word is personification? Which word tells you that this sentence has personification? Write in the chat box. Well done. All of you giving me the right answer. Well done. Okay. Because the human quality struggle has been attributed or has been given to the blades of the grass. That they are struggling to st stay straight, but it's so much uh, airy, it's so much windy that they are not able to stay at their place. Well done. All of you understood that what's the human attribute given here to the blades of grass? It's the word struggled which tells us that this is the human attribute. They are not able to stand straight because of the windy uh, weather. Let's go to the next example. Uh, first, I want all of you to give me one example of personification. Uh, you can use uh, personification about your best friend or uh, you can use personification about your favorite possession. Use personification, personify your favorite gadget, your favorite possession, and write a sentence in the chat box. Lightning dance across the sky, Heather Khan wrote. No road, the flowers are dancing. Okay. Personify things about your mobile phone. Personify, write a sentence using personification about your mobile phone. The tornado banged hardly on my window. Well done, Zainab. That's a very impressive example. Zimmel wrote, the phone is singing. Good. And Zilehuma wrote, the wind howled in the night. Awesome. But you know, the wind howled in the night is a metaphor. Let me clarify. Let's learn from each other because howling is animal attribute, right? It's not the human attribute. So this is not personification. This is metaphor because howling is not human attribute. Muhammad Faik wrote, the sun is smiling. Afia wrote, the wind howled in the night because howling is, you know, animal attribute. This is not humans. Beings don't howl, right? Animals do. So this is not personification. Only qualities of human beings, only the living human beings, not animals. No wrote, my phone is my best friend, lovely. I think everybody's phone is uh, his or her best friend. I hope you all agree. And the trees dance side to side, Isra wrote, in the wind, lovely. Barira wrote, my phone runs quick when it has a lot of charge. Well done, Barira. Hamna wrote, phone is dying, okay. Zimal wrote, the phone is singing. Alina wrote, my cell phone is my best friend, good. The phone is singing. Nabiha also wrote, all of you have singing mobiles. Wow, that's great. 
My Bombal is my sunshine, Aksa wrote. Doa wrote, the moon was resting in the midnight sky. Well done. Heather wrote, the phone danced with the vibration of an incoming call. Cool. And Anam wrote, my phone is my best friend till yet. And Dania wrote, friendship wa walks into the top of the stairs. Friendship walks into the top of the stairs and to the depth of the cave. Uh, you have a very impressive written expression, Dania. Clapping for you. Shout out for you. Aisha Asim wrote, my mobile phone is a brain. Very good. Now the last one. Last one is called hyperbole. Uh, it's an exaggerated statement or a claim. Uh, remember the word exaggerated. It's you make an exaggeration of something. They are not meant to be taken literally. OK, so let's see some examples. For example, if you see here, I nearly died laughing. This is an example of a hyperbolic expression because you couldn't simply die from laughing. In this example, it's obvious that it's said to sound imp uh, impressive that you want to stress on something. Basically, you must remember that you need to exaggerate things when you want to um, uh, stress on something. For example, sometimes you tell your parents that uh, I'm tired. I don't want to do my homework. I have headache or I have this or that. So that means you're stressing on something because you want someone to listen to you. You want someone to agree to you. That's why you need uh, an exaggerated expression. So you are giving me more examples. My uh, Aisha wrote, my mobile is a brain. Pleb Studios wrote, my phone suddenly started to jump around when I got a notification for my teacher's live stream. Uh, well done, Pleb Studio. You are such a sweetheart. Your phone uh, can be my uh, love to your phone also. <laughs> and Noor wrote, my alarm clock yelled at me to wake up in the morning. Well done. Aisha wrote, my cell phone rudely screams for my attention. Good. Your phone, Aisha, your cell phone is really touchy. And I don't get it. Pleb Studio, you wrote, wow, I think. Fatima wrote, the bag weighed a ton. Good. Afia wrote, I've been waiting forever. Good. That's also another hyperbolic expression. Aksa wrote, her stomach hurt so hard that she nearly died. Well done. Heather wrote, her grandmother is as old as the mountains. Well done. Aksa wrote, World War III is going on in my stomach. Oh, wow. <laughs> Get up and eat something then. No wrote, I'm tired and I could sleep for one year. And Hamna wrote, uh, hold on. Hamna wrote, I almost died looking at my face in the morning. OK. Uh, Dania wrote, she's so dumb. She thinks Taco Bell is a Mexican phone company. OK. I have no idea about it. <laughs> OK. Plebs to Zilehuma wrote, Aisha wrote, I could die with hunger. Zilehuma wrote, uh, Ali, it was so cold. I, It was so cold. I saw polar bears wearing hats and jackets. Lovely. It's an interesting example. Pleb Studios wrote, I'm hungry. I could eat a dinosaur. OK. Dua wrote, I must have walked 100 miles. And Zimmel wrote, my phone craves for my attention. Yes, I, I can understand that all the time, 24-7. Zainab wrote, my heart literally stopped when I saw the ghost. OK. And Dania wrote, I told you to clean a room a million times. Well done. OK, we'll stop here. Ex enough examples. Uh, you are pouring out so many examples. Well done. All the participants are so smart here. They're just pouring out so many examples. Uh, Nabiha wrote, I was so hungry that I could eat a horse. Alina wrote, the shopping cost me a million dollars. OK, my hand hurts so much, it's going to drop off. No wrote, he's running faster than the wind. Well done. Let's see one more example. He's 100 feet tall. He could not be literally 100 feet tall. What we mean to say is he's extremely tall. OK, now it's uh, the toughest part is here for all of you. Look at the screen. This is what I aim to teach you in this live stream. In section A, we, we get a question, question number three, question number six, which is the uh, big question. It has 10 marks, and you all have to comment. Uh, make 10 comments at least. So one of them or two, three of them can be about figures of speech. So here's a passage for you. OK, I'll read it for you. And you have to find out any figure of speech that you come across. So let's get started. And then you'll write in the chat box that what is the writer? What is the figure of speech? And by using that, what is the writer trying to say? So let's start our work. OK, I'll be using the pen to highlight things for you. So it's an interview of a person, David Crystal. So he's saying, 
I'm a, I'm as amazed about this as anybody else. Okay, so I'll highlight the lines where there is a probability that you find some figure of speech. I can't quite understand why it's uh, hard such a such bad press, but I think I know why it reduced it reduced us all in the UK to panic. Okay. It all went back to a hoax message in 2003. An essay went up on the web. Supposedly written by a school kid in the UK entirely in the text messaging abbreviations. The teacher couldn't understand a word of it and complained. The story just became bigger and bigger. But the whole thing was undoubtedly a hoax. Interviewer. Was the entire story a hoax or did something really happen that was exaggerated? David Crystal, some kid could have written something like that as a joke, as a game, really. The essay has never been found, nor has the teacher been found. Somebody posted this on the web. Exactly who did it first, I haven't been able to find. But it spread within a matter of weeks. Five years on, people are still saying something. Children are doing. So let me see what's your response. OK. Uh, you have to tell me which one is a simile, which is the simile. You're finding you all found a simile. I'm as amazed as, okay, I'm as amazed about this as anybody else. Fun with Nabiha, you identified the simile. Well done. Uh, okay, Zainab, you found a personification. Can you please tell us which one, which line is personification? Afia wrote, the teacher couldn't understand a word of it and complained. Okay. It's a hyperbolic expression. It can be uh, because she couldn't understand a word of it. This can be a hyperbolic expression. Uh, you wrote personification. You have to tell the lines. Let's see. Fatima wrote, Aksa wrote simile, Isra wrote simile. Which one is the simile? You have to tell me. Alina wrote hyperbole. The story became bigger and bigger. Well done, Alina. Nabiha wrote, the teacher couldn't understand a word. It's a hyperbolic expression. OK, no wrote. It, it reduced us all in the panic. Good. Well done. This is really an example, an appropriate example of uh, hyperbolic expression. I'll read it for you. Look at the line number two, but uh, I can't quite understand why it's as much. Uh, it's it it it's had such a bad press. It has had such a bad press, but I think I know why it reduced us all in the UK to panic. So it reduced us all in the UK to panic. This is a hyperbolic expression. Well done. You found a very appropriate example. Noor, well done. Clapping for you. Shout out for you. The story just became bigger and bigger. OK, bigger and bigger is iteration. Hamna, well done. Barira wrote, it reduced us in the panic. It's an exaggeration. It means many people in the UK panic. Well done, Barira. Aisha Asim wrote, the writer is amazed of anybody as he used figure of speech to highlight He's quoted that I'm as amazed about this as anybody else. Well done. This is a simile. OK, good. You should name the figure of speech. OK, Aisha, you are saying that the writer is amazed uh, as anybody as he's used a figure of speech. You must name which figure of speech. You should say simile. Amreen wrote something like that as a joke, as a game. It's a simile. Well done. Zile Uma wrote something like that as a joke, as a simile. Good. An essay went up on the web. Very good. Zainab, I got your example. This is personification. An essay went up on the web is personification. You look at the first line, third line, an essay went up on the web. So this is uh, personification. Human attribute has been given. Good. Uh, then Rodena wrote, I'm as amazed about this and anybody else. Simile. Then story became bigger and bigger, hyperbole. Then uh, you wrote, a kid could have written something like a joke. Again, simile. Good. Heather Khan wrote, the writer uses alliteration as amazed as in line one. OK. The essay has never been found. Personification. Well done, Dua. Uh, the uh, essay has never been found. Kind of, uh, I don't get it with how its personification can be because we cannot, sometimes we try to find our loved ones and we cannot find. Maybe in that context you are saying, okay. Okay. 
the NSA went up on the web personification. So uh, I'm happy to see that you know how to identify and how to see what the writer is trying to say. Okay, our task number two, we are on text two now. Everybody look at the screen, all the participants. So text two is an extract from an article about teenagers, use of mobile phones and technology. So I know this is your favorite most topic, right? Everybody loves using phones and technology, right? So you can nicely read it and tell me. I'll just give it a reading. And you have to tell me full sentence how you will write in question number three or question number six, OK? Why, how the writer is using figure of speech and what is he trying to say by doing that? I'm reading it for you. I'm not highlighting this time. You have to find it. I'd rather say Filipina, uh, Philippa Gorgon, 16, uh, give up like a kidney give up like a kidney than my phone i'd rather give up like a kidney than my phone how did you manage before carrier pigeons letters going around each other's house on bikes cameron kirk 14 reckons he spends an hour hour and a half on school days hanging out with his 450 odd facebook friends maybe twice that at weekends it's actually very practical if you get what uh, what that day's homework is. Emily Hooley, 16, recalls a very dark moment. We went to Wales for a week at half a term to revise. There was no mobile, no TV, no broadband. We had to drive into town just to get a signal. It was really hard knowing people were texting you, writing on your wall, and you couldn't respond. Loads of my friends said they had just never to do that. They would ne just never do that. So let me see uh, if you are able to find any figures of speech from there. Fatima Aksa identified, I'd rather give up a kidney than my mobile phone. Uh, it's a simile. Fatima Aksa, I would ask you to rethink about your example. Uh, in a simile, we use like or as. Don't be hasty in giving your response. The, uh, all the participants, rethink about it. There is a... Uh, it, it's not a simile because there is no like or as. The writer hasn't used the words like or as. It cannot be a simile, right? So Dua wrote, I'd rather give up a kidney than my mobile phone. It's a hyperbolic expression because we found an exaggeration here. Okay. Zile Omar wrote, uh, Ali, give up like a... Yes, it's a hyperbole. Anam also wrote hyperbole, hyperbolic expression like a kidney. All of you identified. Hamna wrote also hyperbolic expression. Okay, Aksa wrote 450 odd Facebook friend, facts and figures. Well done, Aksa. There are facts and figures given also. Uh, uh, Barira wrote, hanging out with 450 odd friends is also a hyperbolic expression. Well done. Plus facts and figures. Writing on your wall, it's a metaphor. Uh huh. How is it a metaphor? Because uh, you don't have a wall. So wall is a metaphor here. Well done, Pleb Studios. Isra wrote, I'd rather give up a kidney. It's a hyperbole. Okay. Heather Khan wrote, the writer uses alliteration as several places in the text so that the readers can remember it for a long time. We went to Wales in line. Uh, this is alliteration. Well done. One student, Heather Khan, found alliteration. Can you type uh, who the student is, Heather Khan? Can you type your name, please? You are... Uh, the writer uses alliteration as several places in the text so that the reader can remember it for a long time. So we went to Wales. Good. Fun. Nabiha wrote, I'd rather give up a kidney, a hyperbolic expression. Loads of my friends. See, you people are finding so many things from the text. Loads of my friends is also a hyperbolic expression. We went to Wales, alliteration. Well done, Alina. Anam wrote, writing on your wall, a metaphor because... Wall, wall is a metaphor here. The writer used the hyperbolic expression to express his love with the phone that I'd rather give up my kidney than phone. Well done, Aisha. And Zainab wrote it actually very practical if you forget what the day's homework is. Okay, good. Zainab. Uh, Rodana wrote the writer uses hyperbole to explain how much his phone is important to him by stating that he'd rather give up a kidney than phone. Well done. Hanging out with my 450 odd Facebook friends. It's a hyperbolic expression. Okay, Heather, thank you for informing me. I hope you subscribed as well. Subscribe also, please. Thank you for attending the live session. Let's go to the next one. Okay. 
Manahe Siddiqui wrote an R, R and a half alliteration. Yes, there's another alliteration. Anam wrote, it's actually very practical of you to forget that the day's homework is hyperbole. Okay. Now let's move on to the next text. Look at the screen, all of you. Look at the screen now. Let's stop for the previous text. Aisha still gave an example. The writer used hyperbolic expression to express his feelings about phone that hanging out. Okay, well done. That's enough for the previous text. Let's move on to the next text. Look at the screen, everybody. But phones do more than simply text, of course. Okay. Uh, you, you can see all the lines and find out figurative language. More than 80% of phone owning teens also use them to make to take pictures. 60% listen to music on them. 46% play games and 32 swap videos and access social networking sites. Mostly Facebook, 50% more than three years ago. The mobile phone in short is now the favorite communication hub for the majority of teens. Digital communication is just not prevalent in teenagers' life. It is teenagers' lives. There is a very straightforward reason, says Amanda. A few senior research specialists, a, a few se senior research specialists, mobile phones and social networking sites make the things teens have always done a whole lot easier. Mobile phones make the things a whole lot easier. So you have to identify what are the figures of speech here. Okay, let's see. It is teenagers' life. It's hyperbolic expression. Well done, Hamna. Uh, Zile Huma wrote. Sixty percent listen to music. Forty-six percent facts and figures. Well done. Isra Aslam wrote. Uh, it's a teenagers' life. Yes, hyperbolic expression. It's it is their life. Anam wrote hyperbole, yes. Aksa wrote, yes. But phones do more than simply text, of course, personification. Well done. Alina, well done. You are finding the most unique examples from the text. Dania wrote, it is teenager's life. It's a hyperbolic expression. Yes, all of you are able to identify. What do you have to say about this line? Um, I'll read it for you and you have to tell me. Mobile phones and social networking sites make the things teens have always done a whole lot easier. What do you have to say about this line? A whole, they make life a whole lot easier. So, uh, Dua wrote already this example. They have always done a whole lot easier. It's a hyperbolic expression. What, what does the writer mean to say that they make their lives a whole lot easier? It is teenagers' life. 46% play games. There are facts and figures. Yes, personification. Okay. Okay, let's move on to the next text. Look at the screen. Yes. Now look at the screen. And let's identify the figures of speech from here. Rodena wrote the writer use a hyperbolic expression to express the fact that teenagers now a days cannot live without their phones by saying that it is teenagers' life. All of you, when this is uploaded, you can see each other's comments that how you can uh, properly comment on them. Look at the example given by Rodena. This is how you should all comment on the figures of speech in a text. The writer has used a hyperbolic expression to accept, uh, express the fact that teenagers nowadays can live without their phones. This is how, by saying that, it's teenagers' life. Uh, so this is how you can learn from each other. Yes, Heather has a question. The writer has used a symbol percentage everywhere in the text, but only wrote percent once. Why? Uh, are you talking about the previous text? Let me go back. Let me go back. Let me see. You have a question that the writer has used symbol percent everywhere in the text, but only wrote person once. Why? Let me see. Mobile phone, this 80%, teenagers, and... Mm. Where did he write percent? I only see the symbol. I don't see the uh, percent. Where is? Where did he write the word percent? I only see the symbol. 
let me see. Mobile phones do more than simply text, more than 80% of owning teens. And ah, 60% listen to music. It's just a style of writing. This is There is no, nothing particular about it. And I don't think uh, we have to pay much of attention to this. But uh, you are smart enough to find it out. <laughs> I didn't pay attention to it. But it's just the style of writing. Yes, I found it. I found it. No worries. But uh, I don't think we have to pay so much of attention to this. It's just OK. Pleb Studio says it's just because first time full from the shortcuts. OK. Anyways, let's get back to the text. Look at the text and find figurative language here. And now everybody is going to tell me how you're going to use it in the answer. You'll tell me in the chat box the writer has used so and so figures of speech to tell the reader so and so. And then you'll write the, that line. OK? Uh, we don't need to debate about this, whether it's correct or not. It's perfectly the writer's own choice. They're free how they write it. And we cannot question them. OK, so let's move on, uh, all the participants. Let's move on. Come to this text. After exams, a real test of nerve. A real test of nerve. The stress of GC is behind them. Liz Bolter and her son, Aiden, headed to Spain, headed to Spain on an activity holiday with a guaranteed adrenaline rush. We are not close, adrenaline and me. OK, you'll find a lot of figurative language here. Like many grown women, I don't see the attraction in playing in paying to get scared. No horror films or bungee jumping for me. But as I stood up to my waist in fast flowing in fast flowing water in deep gorge in the Spanish. I don't know this word. Pyrenees. I realized that was about change. Just trust yourself and the rope. There are so many figures of speech, said our guide, a muscular youth. OK, the rope looked sturdy enough. So much of figurative language. The rope looked sturdy enough, had already borne the weight of several members of the group. But trust myself to manipulate the rope correctly and abseil over a ledge in the path of the mountain torrent. There were children of primary school age who were managing this fine, for heaven's sake, and it was only a level one Kenyan. OK, so I highlighted things for you. Let me see if you are able to find or not. After exam, a real test of nerve. What is this? Uh, no road like many grown women. It's a simile. Perfect. Dua wrote a real test of nerves, metaphor. Asma Saeed wrote hyperbole for heaven's sake. Well done. Hamna wrote flowing, fast flowing water, alliteration. Well done. Aisha wrote hyperbole. We are not close, adrenaline and me. Also, it can be another figure of speech. Let me see if you are able to find out or not. Hyperbole is we are not close, adrenaline and me. Harun wrote, like many grown women, simile. Perfect, Javeria. A muscular youth personification. Hmm. I'm not sure about the muscular youth. Yes. OK, well done, Aksa. Anam wrote, the writer has used alliteration to describe fast flowing water. Well done. The fast flow of water also, you can say. Fun Nabiha wrote, for heaven's sake, is personif hyperbole. And no wrote, just. Trust yourself and the rope, personification. Well done. Look at this example, all the participants. Just trust yourself and the rope. So this is personification. You cannot trust a rope, but here the writer means to say the only thing that, that can save you is your rope. So you have to trust it. So that means human attributes have been given to you. Well done. Mm, Noor, well done. Clapping and shout out for you, thumbs up for you. Pleb Studios also wrote, just trust yourself and the rope personification because you can cannot really trust a rope. Well done, Pleb Studios. Isra also wrote, for heaven's sake, hyperbolic expression. I saw, found out the rope st uh, looked sturdy enough as personification. Yes. 
and uh, Zainab wrote, the writer has used personification to describe the strength of the rope. Just trust yourself and the rope. Perfect. Perfect, Zainab. Shout out for you. Thumbs up for you, Zainab. Hamna wrote, metaphor. Rodana wrote, the writer has used alliteration to explain the speed of water flowing by the by stating fast flowing water. Well done, Rodana. Zimmel wrote, metaphor. Zimmel, which, which line is metaphor? You must give example. Aisha wrote personification. The, lo the rope looks sturdy enough. Good. Manahil wrote, for heaven's sake, hyperbolic. And Heather Khan wrote, the writer uses the rule of three to add rhyme and poetic beauty to the text. We are managing this fine for heaven's sake. And it was only a level one, Kenyan. OK, well done, Heather. Pleb Studios wrote, I wa it was a second. I don't get it. What are you trying to say? Zile Omar wrote, uh, we're not close hyperbole. Yes, it's personification also. We are we are not close adrenaline and me. Because usually we develop closeness with our friends, right? So uh, Alina wrote, the rope looks sturdy. Correct. OK. Trust myself. Aisha wrote, trust myself to manipulate the rope correctly. It's a hyperbolic expression. And Khadija wrote, for heaven's sake, Alina wrote, we are not close in me. It's a metaphor. OK. And Nida wrote, the writer has used personification to describe the strength of the rope. OK, Binish, well done. OK. So let's move to our next text. OK. Uh, pushing your physical and mental limits at Strathokna Park Lodge by so-and-so. These are such difficult names, Strathopna Park, <laughs> Lodge by so-and-so. I say HT. OK, let's move on to the last text, I guess. Look at the screen. Strap into a harness like a fly, like a fly tangled in a spider web. Strapped into a harness like a fly tangled in a spider web. I was perched high, ever so high, in a tall fir tree, in a tall fir tree in the depths of the forest. I clung to the edge of a small platform and the rope connected me to a steel cable. The rope connected me to a steel cable that stretched 200 feet far down the slope. Go ahead and jump, encourage my instructor. You have to trust the equipment. Easy for him to say, I thought, with my heart pounding and every muscle in my body resisting that uh, what my brain was asking it to do. My brain was asking it to do. I closed my eyes and carefully pushed off. Instantly, I was in free fall. Then the rope attaching me to the zip line jerked tight and sent me hurtling down the slope, hurtling down the slope at an alarming speed until the slope flattened and thankfully slowed me down. Thankfully slowed me down. So let's see your examples here. Uh, OK. Like a fly, tangled in a spider web is a simile. Perfect, Barira. Like a fly, because the word like is used here. Fast flowing water personification. I don't think Manahil is personification. Think again, fast flowing water. There is no human quality. Human beings don't flow fast. I hope you know that. So it cannot be personification. Manahil, rethink. Fast flowing water. There is a repetition of the letter F, so it's more like an alliteration. Pleb Studios wrote, please, I need a link to your channel, if that's OK. Hamna, please, I need. OK, anyways, no wrote, like a fly. Tangled in a spider web, again a simile. Well done, Noor. Like a fly, simile, correct. Hamna, what are you people doing? You can do your private talk separately on your WhatsApp, please. Isra wrote, like a fly tangled in a web. It's a simile. Alina wrote, into a harness like a flip. Perfect. All of you are able to identify the simile. Fatima Aksa wrote, ever so high, a hyperbole. Well done, Aksa. Anam wrote the writer is a simile to describe harness like a fly tangled in the spider web. Yes. Aksa also found some facts and figures, 200 feet. OK. Haroon found like a fly tangled in the Javeria. OK. Aisha wrote, you have to trust the equipment. Well done. I want all of you to look at this example. 
uh, in where the line five is ending, I'm going to encircle it for all of you. Look at the screen. You have to trust the equipment. Human quality has been given here that you have to trust the equipment. Equipment is a non-living thing. You cannot trust it. But here in this scenario, you have to trust it. So human quality has been given. Well done. Shout out for you. Thumbs up for you. You identified this example. Okay. Fatma Aksa also wrote. Aisha Said also wrote this example. The rope attaching to me to the zip line is personification. Uh, there is no human quality, right? So this can be Barira. This can be a metaphor. Okay. Aisha Said, well done. Uh, Asma Said, well done. Zile Huma. Alina wrote, you have to trust the equipment personification. Yes, correct. Aisha wrote, like a fly. It's a simile. Yes. Pleb Studios wrote, my heart, heart pounding and every muscle in my body resisting. Personification. Okay. Dua wrote, every muscle resisting. And my brain was asked what my brain was asking me to do. Uh, you know, resisting is a human quality. So it's more like personification. Every muscle in my body resisting. So it's a human quality. Resistance is human quality. So it's more like a personification. This is how you can learn from each other. Uh, the mistakes made by each of you. You can see in the line, every muscle in my body resisting. Look at this. Resisting is human attribute. Human beings resist. So it's more like a personification, not a metaphor. Okay. The writer used personification to describe the role of the rope of a rope connected me to a steel cable. Okay. Manahil wrote the rope connected me to a steel cable personification. Uh, you know, connecting something is not human quality. So it's more like a metaphor, right? You connect things. You connect one rope to another. So this is more like a metaphor. Anam wrote the writer used personification to describe that you have to trust the equipment. Yes. OK. Tangled in a spider web, Khadija wrote. And uh, Rodana wrote the writer has used hyperbole to describe the fight she experienced while doing the extreme sport by writing that trapped into a harness like a fly okay i want all the participants to see how this uh, outstanding student rodana she is using one full sentence to make a full comment this is how you have to comment in question number three and question number six of your uh, section a for igcsc comprehension when this is uploaded all the new students who are not used to it they can see how she's commenting by using full sentences well done and shout out and thumbs up to all of you, especially to the students like Rodena who are writing full sentences as they write in the exam. Noor wrote, my brain was asking. Oh, very good. Noor found another example. My brain was asking. It's also a personification. It can be a hyperbolic expression. Well done, Noor. Dua wrote, uh, you have to trust the equipment. It's uh, Dua, this is personification because trusting something is human quality right when you trust each other you trust people so this is human attribute this is personification my brain was asking to do also personification good aisha said okay all of you have found the good examples aisha said also found slope flattened okay hamna is giving clapping for everyone yes aisha said my brain was asking is a personification okay well done to all of you You've done really well today. Now we'll continue with a short quiz. Okay, look at the screen. Jenny cooked the candy too long. When she took it out of the oven, it was as it was hard as a rock. Choose from the options. What is it? Is it a simile? Is it a metaphor? Is it personification? Jenny cooked the candy too long. When she took it out of the oven, it was hard as a rock. Yes, you all are writing. Hamna, Hamna, I want you to rethink. When she took off the oven, it was hard as a rock. The word, Hamna, please look at the screen. I'm doing it for you. As a rock. Rethink about your answer, Hamna. The word as, when do we use the word as or like? Remember, I told you in the beginning, we use the word like or as. So, you have to see. All right. Now, all are writing. Javeria, Khadija, Noor. 
Isra Zimal Pleb Studios, Hamna Aisha. It's a simile. So Hamna, what do you have to say? I want a line from you. Hamna, dear, you wrote it's a metaphor. Do you still think it's a metaphor? Yes, it's perfect. No need to apologize. It's all right. We can all uh, misunderstand something a few times. Not at all a problem. Well done. You tried at least. Let's move on to the next example. The old car woke reluctantly from its overnight sleep. Cuffing and sputtering, it finally broke into a louder roar. The old car woke reluctantly. The car woke reluctantly from its overnight sleep. Cuffing and sputtering, it finally broke into a louder roar. Car woke. So what is it? Let's move on to this example. Car woke reluctantly. Most of the participants are giving me the right answer. Very prompt, very quick. Well done. Yes, yes, you are right. Perfect, perfect. Because it compares two things. Nida said, uh, Nida, which one? Nida, dear, which one? Which example are you talking about? Because it compares two things using as. You're talking about the previous example, right? Nida, may I know which student is this? May I know your name? Which student is this? Maria Mashfaq. All the girls, all the participants wrote its personification. Well done, it's correct. Let's move on to the next, next question. The trees of the forest watched sympathetically over the lost child. Watched. The trees of the forest watched sympathetically over the lost child. Cuffing and sputtering is personification because these are the qualities of a human. Well done, Noor. Dania wrote personification. Okay, you are giving me the right answer, most of you. Well done. Perfect, perfect. Perfect. Most of you are telling. I should say road personification because trees cannot watch. Yes, perfect. Trees of the forest watch sympathetically over the lost child. Yes, Zimal also wrote Nabiha, Isra, all road personification. Perfect. Clapping for all of you. Well done. Splendid job. Next question. After Marshall climbed the flights of stairs, he had to sit down. He was puffing. He was a puffing steam engine. He was a puffing steam engine. He was a puffing steam engine. What is this? He was a puffing steam engine. Which figure of speech is this? He was a puffing steam engine. Puffing steam engine. <laughs> well, Rodena, well done. <laughs> somebody wrote it's a metaphor, and then Rodena replied, It's a met. Somebody wrote that somebody said in the beginning that it's it's not a metaphor. And then Rodena replied, He isn't an engine, so it's a metaphor. He isn't a train. <laughs> I shall wrote metaphor as direct comparison is taking place. You all wrote, yes, no wrote metaphor. The writer compared the boy like a puffing steam engine, but he's not using the word like or as. I'm so happy to see that you all gave the right answer. Yes, Nida also wrote, Binish wrote that it compares two things without using like or as. Okay, choose the uh, option. What is the hyperbole? An extreme exaggeration, similar sounds, a little exaggeration. It uses like or as. Write in the chat box. What is a hyperbole? Write in the chat box your answers. Choose from the options given. OK, let's move on to the next slide, people. Come on. OK, Dua wrote option one. Yes, Amna wrote an extreme exaggeration. Yes, perfect, perfect, perfect. All of you reached the right answer. An extreme exaggeration. Pleb Studios also wrote, Binish, Isra, Barira. All of you found the right option. 
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन रुदेना ऑल्सो रोड करेक्ट विच ऑफ दीज इज अर बिली द बॉय वॉज टॉलर देन मी ही हैड अ बाइट साइज कैंडी बार और दे लिव इन स्मॉल हाउस और द बॉय वॉज टॉलर देन अर्थ which one is a personification uh, which one is a hyperbolic expression choose from the options yes afia zimal nabiha dania all wrote the right answer all the participants are able to figure out the right answer well done okay which one of these is a hyperbole the boy was taller than earth okay option number 4 nabiha noor and all are writing aksa Binish, Afia, Anam, Barira, Isra, all are writing correct answer. The boy was taller than Earth. Yes, you are right. Noor also wrote the right answer. Well done. Yes, that's correct. That's correct. That's correct. Yes, Amreen also wrote option four. Okay. Okay. So in the chat box. uh now write uh, one sentence about today's class use a simile or a metaphor or personification or alliteration or a hyperbolic expression about how how did you like today's class okay in the chat box you write how did you like today's class i'm waiting for your response okay let me see how did you like today's class i'm waiting for your response how did you like today's class using a figure of speech you have to tell simile metaphor or personification okay you have to use one figure of speech a simile a metaphor or personification about today's class okay a simile a metaphor or personification you have to write about today's class okay so i'll be reading your comments you are saying the class went my my thoughts go like a train anam wrote the class was as good as a cake okay as good as a cake really and looks like you are hungry i learned these figures of speech as a robot nabiha wrote okay zimal wrote today's class was amazing okay use figures of speech to describe today's class okay any figure of speech uh Isra wrote taking today's class was as fun as going to the mall with with friends okay Aisha wrote today's class was a beneficial as eating apple is important to keep a doctor away <laughs> so who do you want to keep away by today's class attending today's class then you wrote today's class was informative as a book well done manail who used a very appropriate example it was like reading a book uh zimal wrote today's class was fun as going out rodena wrote was as informative as a documentary well done rodena you are giving very appropriate examples and pleb studios wrote it was calling my name today's class was calling my name well done you are using personification hamna wrote the class was as fast as my wifi speed well done no wrote today's class is as fun than playing a roller coaster fun Okay Aisha gave a heart but thank you Aisha so sweet of you and uh, Nabiha also sent a heart then about today's class was a massive bomb oh you are using the previously taught vocabulary well done Zainab i'm massively impressed by you i had the time of my life learning figures of speech from a considerate and beautiful teacher like you oh, thank you so much you are such a sweet heart Zainab You're most welcome, Rudena. Zilio Maro, today's class was easy as a pie. Thank you. Aksa wrote, as the class was as fun as swimming. Okay. Dania wrote, learning is like cleaning a cleaning a home. It never ends, but learning with Miss Sunila is as easy as eating ice cream. Dania, thank you. You are such a darling. Thank you so much. 
I had a whale of a time, Zimal wrote. I'm so happy to see that you are using the previously taught vocabulary in the previous sessions. Thank you, Leali. Today's class was massively important and fun. Okay. But uh, thank you. I just wanted you to use these figures of speech to sum up today's class. But uh, uh, the most important part is that I wanted you to learn how to, uh, you know, comment on the usage of figures of speech. When it's uploaded, you can always see the examples given by each student and you can see how you have to comment on them. Like uh, some students wrote them in full examples. You can see Rodena's examples and everybody else's example that how you in full sentence form, how you can comment on them. OK, still you are writing my brain patched up as fast as lightning because my memory was howling strongly to add an extra color to the intensity of the words used in figurative language. Isra wrote good vibes. Aisha asked him. Today's class was as informative, as fun as cooking. Beautiful dishes that you like. Iman Khalid. Okay, well done. Thank you. Now I'm keen for growing more examples of figures of speech. Heather wrote today's class was so much fun that I would go an extra mile to attend the next class. Yes, well done. Heather also used the newly taught words that we learned in the previous sessions. I'm so happy to see Heather that at least uh, somebody's learning from me. I had a whale of a time in today's class. Well done. OK, that's enough. I took a lot of your time. Thank you so much for sparing your precious time. Uh, my pleasure, Aisha. The pleasure is all mine. I'm so thankful to all the participants who attended today's session. Thank you so much. Just I want to share the screen to play the last slide because it's massively, massively important to me. <laughs> Look at the screen, everybody. I hope you can see it right. I hope it's coming. Thank you, all the participants. Thank you. You are sending me lovely emojis. Thank you so much. Nabiha, thank you. Fatma Aksa, thank you. Anam, Noor, Aisha, figurative language has massively skyrocketed. OK, well done, Aisha. Nabiha, Iman, thank you. Alina. I don't see the screen. Really? I I shared the screen. I hope it's coming or not. I just wanted to. Um, okay, let me just check check it out again. I wanted to share the screen. Share, and here you go. And the PowerPoint. Now you see the screen. Yes, now you see it. Uh, you always work the extra mile to provide us with the best education. Thank you. You are such a lovely person. Thank you for saying all that. Thank you for the emojis, Aisha. Now the screen is there, right? You can see the screen. I'm really happy that I watched the helpful video. Amen. Thank you. OK, I had a veil of a time spending time with all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you for your presence. Thank you, everyone. OK, one minute. I'll just hide it. I'll just stop sharing the screen. OK, thank you so much for your precious time. I'll end the broadcast. Thank you so much for your time and effort and just participating in all the activities that we did today. Thank you. I hope you are going to have a whale of a time later also. OK, thank you. Yes, now you can see the screen. Yes, you're most welcome, all of you. Thank you. You're most welcome. I'll end it now. OK? Thank you. OK, take care. Bye, everyone. OK. Thank you so much. OK, bye. Bye. Web Studios, bye. You also take care, all of you, Hamna, everyone, Dua. Okay. Okay, I'm going to end it now. Thank you so much.